Okay, this is a bit of a revision of straight line graphs. Um, okay, first what we're going to look at is the equation of a straight line. Now there's two ways that you can see the equation of a straight line. First way is gradient intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b, where m is the gradient and b is the y intercept. Now you've been seeing that now since year 9. So for example if we see the equation y equals 1 third x plus 1 it has gradient m which is a third and it has um, y intercept b which is 1. If we look at this equation here y equals 2 minus a half x the gradient is the coefficient or the number in front of the x. So that equation there can be really written as negative a half x plus 2 because it's minus a half x plus 2 so the gradient here is negative a half and the y-intercept here is positive 2 so just be careful with that type that the gradient is the coefficient of the x and the y-intercept is the constant term now that was the first example and then the second one and here is the third example now in this um, equation here it is not in y equals mx plus b form so I uh, you need to change it into y equals mx plus b form to find its gradient. So what we would do, I'm going to keep the x over here, bring the 4 over. So I've got x minus 4 equals, and I'm going to make take this to the other side to make it a plus 2y. And then what I would do now to get y on its own is to divide everything or divide both sides by 2. And I would get x over 2 minus 4 over 2 equals 2y over 2, which is y. So that means I've got y equals x on 2 is 1x on 2 minus 4 on 2 is 2. So therefore, that has gradient equal to a half and y-intercept equal to negative 2. And with my fourth example, y equals 4x, that's the same as y equals 4x plus 0. That has gradient 4 and y-intercept 0. So that would pass through the origin, that curve. It would pass through um, x, through y is 0. y is 0, x is 0. Okay. Now, just another, some more examples based on y equals mx plus b. Write down the equation of a line that has a gradient of 3 and cuts the y axis at 2. So remember, it's y equals mx plus b form. So it would be y equals 3x plus the y-intercept is 2, okay? So that's the um, answer for that. Next one, write down the equation of a line that has a gradient of 2 thirds and passes through the origin. So if the gradient's 2 thirds, remember it's y equals mx plus b format, so it'll be 2 thirds x plus. Now the origin is the point 0, 0. There's the origin, sorry, you can't see it there. So the origin is here. It's the point 0, 0, x is 0, y is 0. So therefore the y-intercept would be 0, so we get y equals 2 thirds x. So that would be the um, equation of a line that has gradient 2 thirds and passes through the origin. Now, we're also going to look at the general form of a straight line. Now, the general form of a straight line is as follows, where you write it as ax plus by plus c equals 0. Now, the thing with this, a, b, and c must be integers. Now, integers are whole numbers or 0. Um, the, the a, actually, you, you still need to have... Um, what we need here is if you're writing it out like this, so we said that, sorry, a, b, and c are integers, so we don't want fractions for a, b, and c, okay? They have to be whole numbers, positive or negative whole numbers. Sometimes c could be zero. Um, you wouldn't, you can sometimes get um, a or b equals zero, but not both of them, okay? So when you do write it in this general form, if you're writing it like this, the main thing is that a has to be greater than zero. I know that's different to what I've just said. The only time if x is, if a is zero or b is zero, you'd get special cases of lines where you've got, where you get horizontal and vertical lines. So, but just in the general case of a line, apart from horizontal and vertical lines, just making sure that this a is always positive, okay? Now, for example, let's look at this equation, 4x minus 2y plus 3 equals 0. I want you to write that in mx plus b form, and then we can see its gradient and y-intercept. 
So to write that in y equals mx plus b form, you need to make y the subject of the formula. So I'm going to keep the 4x over here and the plus 3 over here, but I'm going to take that minus 2y over. And I've got 4x plus 3 equals 2y. Now I want to divide everything by 2. So 2y over 2 is just y. And so therefore, my equation would be y equals, now 4x on 2 is 2x plus 3 on 2. So therefore, the gradient of this line is 2, and the y-intercept is 1.5 or 3 on 2. Okay, now with this question here, write y equals two thirds x plus five in general form. Now, in general form is ax plus by plus c equals zero. So, what I need is to have no fractions. Now, to write this in general form, it has to be, as I said before, ax plus by plus c equals zero. A, B and C have to be integers. In other words, you can't have any fractions. And the problem is we have a fraction here. So we need to get rid of this divide by 3. So what we do is we multiply through by 3. So we multiply everything by 3. So we get 3 times Y is equal to... Now, if we times this by 3, if we get 2 over 3X times 3, then the divide by 3 cancels with the times 3 and we get 2X plus 5 times 3 is... 15. So what I've done is multiplied through each term by 3. Okay, so I can, actually what I'll do, I'll just get rid of that for a sec, I'll do it again. What you can do is you're going 3 times y equals 3 times the other side. Okay, if you're worried that you might make a mistake. So we get 3y equals now 3 times 2 thirds x is 2x and 3 times 5 is 15. Now, to put it in the form ax plus by plus c equals 0, where a is positive, now the coefficient of the x here is positive, so the 2x has to stay on this side. So we'll bring the 3y over and make it minus 3y plus 15, and then we put equals 0. So now we've written that in general form. Okay, now we'll just look at different ways of graphing straight lines. Look, a lot of this um, I'm sure you're fine with, but we'll just review it anyway. So, first way is to use a table of values. For example, if you're given the equation y equals 2x plus 5, you can just um, find three values for x and then substitute them into the equation to get the y value and then plot the points. So, for example, when x is 0, we get 2 times 0 is 0 plus 5 is 5. Notice that whenever you're doing when x is 0, you actually end up with the y-intercept. So the first one we've got is that when x is 0, y is 5. Now for the next one, when x is 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus 5 is 7. So the next one is 7. And when x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4, plus 5 is 9. So the third point is 9. So if I was able to continue. And then you just join those points. Now you have to make sure if it's a straight line. If it's not a straight line, then one of the substitutions or maybe more than one of the substitutions is incorrect and you need to check it again. Okay, another way that you can graph a straight line, especially if it's in general form, is to find the x and y intercepts. Now to find the x intercept, substitute y equals zero. So for example, with this equation here, if I want the x intercept, I'll substitute y equals zero. So I get 2x plus 0 plus 4 equals 0. And so therefore 2x is negative 4, x is negative 2. That is my x-intercept. Okay. Now for my y-intercept, I substitute. So that was my x-intercept. So I'll just move it up here so I've got enough room. And for the y-intercept, we will substitute x is 0. So we get 2 times 0 is 0 plus y plus 4 is 0 and we can see that y would be negative 4 here. Okay, if we take that 4 to the other side we get y is negative 4. So now to sketch that we just plot our x-intercept and our y-intercept. See, I'll just move this a bit up. I'll move it up here because the x-intercept is negative 2. Now, you don't need to put all the dashes for each number. You just put roughly where um, negative 2 is for your x-intercept. 
negative 4 is the y-intercept, plot those two points and just join them. Okay, so that's the another way of sketching a line using x and y-intercepts. Now, the last way of sketching a line, I think this might be the quickest way, especially if it's in y equals mx plus b form, is to use the to use the y-intercept and gradient to sketch your line. So here's our first graph. The first thing you do is you look for the y-intercept and mark it on the y-axis. So here my y-intercept, so b is negative 1, I mark that first. So I put my negative 1 here, that's my first point. And then my gradient is 3. Now I have to write it as a rise over run, so it's 3 over 1. So that's my rise 3 and run 1. Now if it's rise 3, I go up 3 from my, so I start with my y-intercept and from that y-intercept I mark out my gradient. So I go up 1, 2, 3. So I go up 1, 2, 3. There and then across 1, across to positive 1 because it's a positive rise and a positive run. So then I just join my two points. Okay, so that's the line y equals 3x minus 1. Notice it's got a y-intercept of negative 1 and the gradient is up 1, 2, 3 over 1. So, okay. Now for my last one down here, if I want to sketch y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1, notice this one's got a negative gradient. So, what I'll do, my y-intercept is positive 1, so I'll plot that first. Just put in some values here. It's running out of a bit of room there. And my gradient is negative 2 thirds. Now, I like to always rise first, so I like to write that as 2 over negative 3, okay? So, because negative 2 over 3 is the same as 2 over negative 3, because a negative divided by a positive is negative, and a positive divided by a negative is also negative. So therefore, my rise will be 2, and my run is negative 3. So I start from my y-intercept, which is 1, I rise up 2, and I run back 1, 2, 3. And that's my second point. And then I can join those two points. So this is what I've done. I started here, and I went up 2 and back across negative 3. So now I just join these two points. Um, I don't want to actually indicate, unless you've got grid paper, and I'm not even using a ruler, which is really a big no-no, I'm actually not going to indicate any values here because I'm not sure where it cuts through, but I do know that it passes through this point and that point. This is the line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. Notice it's got a negative gradient as well indicated by the negative two-thirds, and the y-intercept is positive one. Okay, now another type of question. Find the gradient and the y-intercept of each line below and hence write its equation. We can see here that the y-intercept is negative two. Now for the gradient, we're going from negative two up, we're rising, so gradient is rise over run. We're going up from negative two to zero, so that's going up two, and we're running across Four. Now I always like to start at the bottom point. So we're rising up two, because to go from negative two to zero is going up two, and running across four. Now going up is positive and going to the right is also positive, so my gradient is two over four, which simplifies to a half. So therefore my equation is y equals one half x minus two. Now with this um, line here, I've got that my y-intercept b is negative 3, and my gradient, again, is going to be rise over run. So I start at the bottom point. To be able to rise, you must, you must start at the bottom point. So to go from here up to there, you're rising up 3, and then you're running backwards here from 0 to negative 2. So you're running a distance of 2 units. Like if you have grid paper, you'd be jumping 2 squares. So we're running back negative 2. So therefore my gradient is a positive divided by a negative. So I've got 3, positive 3 over negative 2. So my gradient is negative two, 3 over 2. 
because a positive divided by a negative is a, neg is a negative. So therefore my equation is y equals negative 3 on 2x minus 3. Okay. Now for parallel lines. We know that parallel lines have the same gradient. So um, here is a question. Um, is y equals 2x plus 5 parallel to 2x minus y plus 6 equals 0? Now this line here has gradient. It is in y equals mx plus b form and it has gradient equal to 2 because that's line 1. I'll put m1 equals 2. Now this line over here I can't see what the gradient is so I need to make y the subject. If I take this minus y to the other side I get that 2x plus 6 equals y. So this is in y equals mx plus b form now because I've got y equals 2x plus 6 so therefore the gradient is 2 as well. So therefore m1 equals m2 so therefore the lines are parallel. Okay. Now perpendicular lines. Two lines are perpendicular if the product of their gradients is equal to negative 1. In other words, the first gradient times the second gradient is negative 1. Now here is a question. Is, sorry, not if, it should be is. Is y equals 3x plus 2 perpendicular to x plus 3y plus 6 equals 0? So looking at this line, the gradient of this line is 3. I'm calling it line 1, so m1 is 3. Now this line here, I can't tell what its gradient is. I need to make y the subject. So I'm going to keep the 3y over here because it's a plus 3y. And I'm going to take the x and the 6 to the other side. And I'll get 3y equals minus x minus 6. Now I need to get y on its own. So I need to divide everything by 3. So 3y divided by 3 is 3 is, is y, sorry. Then I'm dividing this by 3. And I'm dividing that by 3. And so therefore that gives me y equals... Now there is a 1 in front of that x, so I get y equals negative 1 thirds x minus 2. Now I need to come over here, so sorry, over here. So therefore the gradient of that line, m2, is negative 1 third. Now I'll come over here. m1 times m2 is 3 times negative a third, and 3 times negative a third happens to be negative 1. So therefore the lines are perpendicular because when we multiply their gradients we get negative 1. Okay now just looking at vertical and horizontal lines. Um, this is the y-axis, this is the x-axis and if we want to draw the line x equals 2, there's x equals 2, it's a vertical line. And if I draw the line x equals negative 3 that would be over here also another vertical line. And the line x equals 4 is over here. That's also another vertical line. Okay, so um, these vertical lines have this form and they cut through the x-axis. Same thing, we'll look now, look at horizontal lines, y equals 2. If this is the point y equals 2, then the line y equals 2 goes across like that. y equals 3 would be up here y equals negative 5 would be down here somewhere. Okay, sorry I'm off the screen. So they're horizontal lines. Okay, so of that type, horizontal lines are of the type y equals, y equals, y equals. Okay, now another thing that we're going to look at is to see if a point lies on a line. Now if a point lies on the line, its coordinates satisfy the equation of the line. And to see um, if the coordinates satisfy the equation of a line, you substitute the coordinates of the point into the equation of the line. And if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then um, the point lies on the line. So, sorry. I should say here, if the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, then the point lies on the line. First example here, does the point 3, negative 5 lie on that line? So here we would substitute x is 3 and y is negative 5. So let's do that now. So if y is negative 5, we get negative 5 equals 2 over 3 times 3 minus 7. Working out this left-hand side, we just get negative 5. Um, 2 over 3 times 3, the 3 is cancel, or you can do 2 times 3 is 6 divided by 3 is 2 minus 7. 
and we'll just keep going over here. Left hand side is negative 5, right hand side is 2 minus 7 which is negative 5. So therefore left hand side equals right hand side. So therefore yes, the point lies on the line. Yes, point lies on the line. Now just for a few more um, finishing examples, find the value of the pronumeral if the point negative 3m lies on the line y equals 2 minus 3x. So again substitute x is negative 3 um, y equals m and we would get m equals 2 minus 3 times negative 3 because we're substituting y is m and x is negative 3. So we get 2 minus 3 times negative 3 so we'll get m is 2 minus, now 3 times negative 3 is negative 9, or it's 2 plus 9, which is 11. Okay, next example, find the equation of the line that passes through these points. Now, when you do this sort of question, these really are points that would form a straight line. Notice that the x value is going up by 1, and that's really important. So if the x value is going up by 1, you just look at the y values and you notice that they're going down by 2. So what the y values are going down by becomes your gradient. So I know that my gradient is y equals negative 2x. Okay? Now, so my gradient, sorry, is negative 2. So my equation so far, it's going to be y equals mx plus b. Because it's going down by negative 2, my gradient is negative 2. But you can only do that if the x values are going up by 1. Now, we're looking for the y-intercept. We know that the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So the y-intercept is plus 7. Okay, so that's the equation of your line. Looking at this one here, notice that the y values are going up by 2. So therefore... Also, x values are going up by 1, which is good. So therefore, the gradient is positive 2. Remember, y equals mx plus b is your um, general form of your equation. So y equals 2x. Um, and the y-intercept occurs when x is 0. So we get 2x plus 3. Okay. Now, for the last question, find the equation of the line perpendicular to the y-axis and passing through 3, negative 4. Best way to do this is to sketch. So the point 3, negative 4 might be down here. We want the line that is perpendicular to the y-axis. So if I draw the line down like this, it's parallel to the y-axis. If I draw the line across like that, it's perpendicular to the y-axis. Now because we've come across 3 and down 4, this line would be a y equals line and it would be y equals negative 4. That's the equation of that line. Okay? That's the end of this video. Um, you can now do exercise 7.3 from your textbook. Um, I will send you an email now letting you know which questions.